Hello and welcome. Hope everyone's doing all right. Uh, I was going to do this as one final reveal, but I thought the devil is in the detail with these sort of things. So I will actually do a kind of as I'm going one now. So it might be a little bit chopsy, but I'm going to finish off the pergola for all intents and purposes today. There will be some little finishing touches, but that will mainly be um you know like little bits of trellis and things for the um plants to climb up and whatnot so we'll do that at a later date but today it's a lovely day i've got about four hours of daylight left the roof i've got it's out in the van um but we need to do the structure first so when it comes to the roof on here if we look at this one actually it might be a bit more better originally when i was conceptualizing this i thought i was only going to use half size of this wood meaning that I would need another gutter on top of that one there. But as you can see, it's since changed because I've used this wood that's twice the thickness of it, but it still hasn't quite reached the top of the gutter yet. Um, so I need something to take it up. So the plan is uh, that gap actually where the gutter is, um, that is seven centimetres from, you know, about a centimetre above the gutter back down. So I've bought some wood that is seven by two. You can see the three lengths of it on the right. And then this one just led down here and the plan is is to slice that diagonally lengthways and then sit it on top and just like blue peter here's one i did earlier or last night uh, i've actually done two of them so yeah you can see that's cut straight down the middle lengthways and then the other one i've done of these is up here already so obviously that's not been tapped in yet but you can see what I've done there and what it means. If I laid a normal bit of wood, it would bring the right hand side up too high. But because it's so thin at that end, it kind of has still got a fall, but it takes me up over the gutter end. So what I'm going to do first is just put a few sort of tack these bits in, as it were, just to stop them moving while I'm working on them. And then that top wedge that I've just cut last night, the four of them, put them on top. And then using whatever else I've got left in my spare bits of wood uh, down there probably these uh, three here um, those ones there I'll use them somewhere the rest of the seven by two that I've got there I'll use somewhere and yeah basically put some struts in across these and then give me something good to fix the roof to so we'll see how we do I'll tack them in I'll put these wedges in um, and we'll go from there okay they're all in now it's all screwed down from the top with some beasts and then these things are sort of just tapped in where i can from underneath so um thought starting in the middle would make sense as you can see uh so what i want to try and do is a kind of skylight effect so what i thought i'd do is split this middle section into four and then take out the middle one effectively and then what i'll do with these ones so the um so it looks a bit different is split it into thirds so i have two and then they shouldn't line up and that's actually going to do me a few favors because what i didn't think of is these ones here at the end are screwed in from the back but then when i come to put this one in i'm not going to be able to screw it from this side because that bits of wood that bit of wood's there already um I don't really know what I'm going to do about that. I suppose go in at an angle from the top or something. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. So I'll get all these rest of these bits in. Um, and then we will go from there. I'm going to have to make a decision what's going to go the other side of this bit of wood here, actually. I've just put that one in there to make it look right from the other side like as in it mirrors what's against the garage but I need to cover up this I did originally buy those big posts to go in there so I'll probably cut one of them up they're a little bit bowed though but I'll cut one of them up or cut them up and chuck them in there and see what it all looks like at the end I'm going to paint it all or stain it all like a red really dark red tiki brown maroon sort of colour um so hopefully that will hide the difference in the color but yeah we'll get to that at the end we can always hide stuff pretty easily uh yeah i'm going to carry on with them and then hopefully it'll be time to get the roof on okay right it's the next day now i've changed the aspect on the um camera to give us a bit more of a wide angle so it's easy to see but here is the roof on 
it was a bit dark by the time I finished last night, but you can see that's all on there nicely, nicely tacked in. I've got my like skylighty effect there, although it's not quite as pronounced as I was hoping. I should have put these two in a little bit closer together in the middle, but it is what it is now, I'm not changing it. Um, and same again up this end here. So I just need to tie in the loose ends at this end, but I probably won't be able to do that until I take the gate out and put it back to a fence panel. And I'm not gonna be able to do that until I've done everything else in the garden, like the waterfall and the patio, because I haven't got an alleyway, as you can see. So I need to bring all the materials either through the house uh, or through this gate. So that's what I do, but it's gone quite well. It's gone a little bit off perfect if that makes sense in two respects the first one is that where i was putting these cross braces in to make it a bit easier for me to screw them in i made them a little bit bigger and then had to bang them in with a hammer now of course at the time i didn't think anything of it but when i've gone to put this big bit of wood back in it won't go back in now <laughs> i hammered that yesterday and i couldn't get it in so i'm either gonna have to cut it down a little bit it's because this one's pushed out to the left a little bit at the top so yeah i i'll either get a bit bigger hammer or i'll work something out for that but we'll do that um you know and uh, next basically um yeah and the other thing is i was saying about filling the gaps up here i've done that it looks horrific because it's a completely different type of wood that's a that's the old fe that's a fence posts up there but they fill the gap nicely so i'm going to leave them up there and then what i'll do is work out a way of hiding it all favorite at the moment is probably to buy this trellis that i've got running up the right there that big panel if i was to buy one of them and cut it lengthways to marry up with the whole height of that pergola then i can just screw it in on the face of all of that once i've done all the overhangs um and that will hide all my sins and i'm going to paint it all uh sort of teak anyway so yeah that's how that all done it's all screwed down got a couple of little finishing touches to do on it just you know where you can see the end of the roof and things like that but uh we'll get to that i won't know until it rains what i need to do basically so we'll have a good little test on that next thing for me to do now is these little off cuts here that i've got of this other wood um is to cut out all the overhangs like that uh, because that's all one bit of wood there and all horizontal uh, if i would have used one bit of wood over here they're at a slant so the overhangs would have been at an angle and i want them horizontal so that's why i've done them like this i've left vertical bits at the end as you can see there so essentially i just need to cut the hex bit out that overhangs leave a little tail on it and then i can screw it into that wood or down into the pergola or use some little metal straps or whatnot so that'll be my next thing to do is to work my way all the way around uh do all of those with those spare bits of wood that i've got that should mean i think it's going to work out near enough perfectly cursing myself um so i'll do that next uh and then that should be it and it's just finishing touches okay so the four hours from last weekend that i was hoping to get it all done in uh hasn't quite happened this is the next weekend now so just to show you behind the curtain on these bits that i'm doing the overhangs here <clears throat> this is the shape of them that i've cut out like that so the overhang bit's really easy it's 22 mil from the front of the pergola and then 11 centimeters where my hand is 11 centimeters there and then just join the, join the dots and do that so it's not a perfect octagon by any means uh, just because i haven't got my ladder out yet but if you see up here what i did is i finished these halfway across um and then what i do if i can get it is sit that on top it's not perfect i don't think this is the one that's cut for this one but you can see it just overhangs and then what i'll do is i'll screw down from the top into this pergola here uh, this, this front piece of the pergola here so i've done this all the way around with the little off cuts i've got there's one there one there one there two there because that one's obviously when i when i get that bit of wood in it would be a double a few annoying little bits are starting to show their shell selves you can just see that gap <laughs> between the sort of fence post and that so being a plumber when's all said and done i'll fill it with a bit of silicon or brown coke or whatever people use and then because the idea of the overhangs being 22 mil is that the little coping 
stones you can see on the edge of the patio they're 22 mil so the idea was it comes out as far as that you can see on this bit that it juts out so i've cut out two bits that jut out let's not measure them though because they're not perfect but um yeah they'll, they'll jut out enough and of course i didn't think about this when i was doing it but those two bits there i should have centralized them so that they were even between the fence posts but yeah too late now um so that's that and then what that leaves me with is the two long bits that i used as stencils for messing around cutting the original parts of the pergola out because uh, they ended up too short in the end but luckily for me oh, for these four bits that are going to go here so there'll be one right next to that fence post because this one here is kind of almost kissing the corner of the 45 I'll put another one kiss in the corner of that 45 and then one directly in the middle of them and then obviously this one on the angle here so that makes four times 90 those bits of wood are 220 each which leaves me more than enough to go through so yeah hopefully it should all work out all right I've got a few niggly little issues though like I said this bit here uh, I can't seem to get it in so it's either take all of that apart uh, or get the multi-tool and just that notch there just take out a couple of mil on it so guess which option I'm going to choose on that um, and also a few of these bits of wood have shrunk so uh, this one here you can see it's got a big old gap there and a big old gap there but you know like I said a bit of silicon will sort that out so yeah I'm going to get it all cut up screwed in uh, and then that'll be that right lesson learnt don't do anything creative ever uh, and I'll never make it as a chippy um, yeah these things have been what is known in the trade as the highest levels of annoyance sort of got there in the end and they're not quite I don't know so something's not quite right to my eye as to what I was looking at in my mind's eye for the last five months it does work well like as in they're all horizontal and then when I get those last ones in over there obviously just ignore the two I haven't done them yet it's taken me so long to do, get these in <laughs> but yeah um the jut out I think it's it's really annoying that they're not central to the fence posts to me um but then is anyone going to notice and see it once it's got plants and climbers growing up the fence posts and across it all probably not and the trouble is I'm in too deep now and uh, what's really annoying actually is that that bit of wood um, I've actually got a couple of offcuts I could have used for like the normal size ones or the other ones um, and then I could have used that bit of wood to do the 45 like I have over in that corner in this corner here um, so yeah but I'm in too deep now can't do anything about it uh, so yeah super annoying because I've been using a handsaw on a wibbly wobbly bit of wood the sort of bit that sat on top of the pergola uh, all but one of them are not dead flat so as I'm screwing down from the top it's pulling it it's twisting them I've managed to just about sort them out see that one looks actually quite good that one looks quite good and then I think as we get around here that one's okay but this end one you just see it's like off it's not dead vertical that I mean it's not too bad but yeah it's just one of these things that's going to annoy me um but you know like I said I'm in too deep now so next one or next lot is to do these four and we'll see how it looks but yeah a bit disheartened um that it's not quite I don't know what's not right about it because it is kind of how I imagined it but it's not looking as good as I imagined it so yeah we'll um we'll see how it goes it might just be a trick of the eye or just because I know they're wrong at the moment so get it all in there sleep on it wake up tomorrow and see what happens okay right next day now um I'm feeling a lot better about it actually uh it's not doesn't look as bad and I'm not too worried about centralizing it all now I think I was just a little bit uh a little bit tired and cranky shall we say um but yeah we got there in the end I've purposely left it like an absolute s tip because uh, I will do one when I've done all the last bits uh, which we'll go for in a sec um I'll do one last final reveal on it when it's all 
up and running properly as it were so if we go around a bit of the slab well actually if i just show you what i did yesterday you can see i've got these bits in over here so they look pretty good i tried it with two so that i could maybe use the extra bit for the 45 behind us but um it didn't look right so that's about as good as it's going to get those ones like i said the one on the right of those three i wanted to marry up with this one here as in how close it is to the 45 and then i've kind of just gone off that and tried to centralize it and make it a little bit symmetrical it looked a bit funny when i pulled it right over to the post um but yeah that looks pretty good to me so happy with that so we're next video i'll do a final reveal but i've got a few snaggy bits i need to do so i'll go through them now just so you're aware this thing leaks like a sieve um that is because you'll probably see i'll put the camera up uh just so you can have a look but some of them i've used the rubber washers that you buy kind of made for this sort of thing and other ones i've used big metal washers and i forgot to put the i forgot to put silicon under the metal washers and the water's getting in so i get a few drips when it rains but that's that, that that's dead easy that's nice and accessible that one so i'll just get me silicon gun and just uh silicon around and pull them out and just uh, put a bit of silicon underneath them and dab them down and then go down the edges of that one that'll be that bit done i am going to buy <clears throat> another bit of wood and then what i'll do with this overhang here is i'll cut it but i'll cut it flush with the edge of the pergola and then i'll put a 45 in so that it marries up uh, with this coping stone here sort of to the right side of that tiki head and then it should mirror the other side where that joist there sort of but the middle joist sort of butts up to it almost and then with the excess i'll have one coming out from the middle there um so that'll be all good uh in my wisdom i've only just realized this but i didn't leave any overhang on this roof here so <laughs> I really cannot be bothered to take all the screws out because it would be really difficult to get to it because I don't want to climb on top of that. So uh, I'll see if I can get to it. I might do, but I'll probably, using the offcuts that are down there in the corner behind the table, I'll probably just do a bit of a, uh, let's not call it a bodge, let's call it a work around on that. A few other annoying bits that I've got to sort out are, can you just see... On the top of there that the top of the overhang doesn't marry up with the um the joist that's coming from the house uh, now this one what i'll have to do is the overhang i'll have to take off and cut a bit out because the bottom of those actually marries up with that pergola quite well if we come across to this one here um you can see this one doesn't marry up either but it's because this is slightly dropped down so i can just put a little bit of um little off cut of wood in there just to take it up and then that one's okay um a few other things as well um cover cover that hole in between the two there um that little triangle bit but i'll have to sort the wiring out first yes health and safety on the wire i know i know i know um if I'm going to buy another bit of wood, they only come in like 3.8s or 4.8. So if I've got enough left over, I might recut that one that's quite small. That's got the big gaps next to it. Um, and then for the fun stuff, <coughs> what I'm going to do, because like I said, the plan is with that giant honeysuckle. Is you can see I'm trying to train it across the front of it. And the idea is, is to get one nice long main trunk running around the whole front of it as far as it will go and then the offshoots go back over the pergola um so what i'm going to do is the kind of trellis that i've got running across the fence i'm going to kind of do that initially around it and i thought what that'll do here's one i've prepared earlier is that if i was to have it like that like that that'll a make these overhangs all dead vertical and then what i'll do conveniently enough if we have a look over here the horizontal bits you can see not the not the top one but the the the, the sort of second one down as it were the first one down that marries up exactly with the top of the pergola it's kind of half on half off so if i carry them on at the right height when i get over to this bit 
it will cover my big sins <laughs> of the massive gap between the fence post and the pergola there so that'll work quite well and then because the honeysuckle likes um wires rather than trellis i'll run some wires in it as well these two fence posts i'm going to go to the climber specialist uh, just down the road who sorted me out the giant honeysuckle and get something nice and fancy with some really nice flowers from there and put them in the pots and let it climb up there so i'll either put wires or trellis on the fence posts and then the piece de resistance if that's what it is is what i'm going to do with these is <clears throat> this sort of you're not going to be able to see it but the sort of hard wire rather than this soft wire here the, the hard wire i'm going to make a massive grid pattern in amongst all this so effectively on these horizontal ones maybe do six to eight holes and then run it all the way through horizontally if you like and then run maybe three can you just see those three knots in the wood there and then run three vertically if you like off the house and make a massive grid pattern out of wires inside the pergola and then when the honeysuckle if the honeysuckle gets across it can then be folded over and um do it and the beauty of that is we've got that gap there so if i ever do put a roof on that it'll be under the roof um and then hopefully the idea is is in time you walk out and it's like a little garden room with a living roof and giant honeysuckle flowers uh, drooping down that you have to walk through. That's the idea anyway, but we'll see how we do. So the next one, I'll get everything done. <clears throat> It'll probably take me a couple of months. Um, just because just it's one of them little annoying snagging things. So... It'll probably take me a few months and then maybe in the summer once I've got the plants in and the trellis and the honeysuckles growing. The last in the series will be it sort of all up and running and everything done. But for now, I'm pretty happy. I must say 80-90% happy. It's done. That's another good thing. I've used up a load of wood. Um, got the little roof on there. It hasn't rained yet, so I don't know if I have to do anything there with regard to leaking. Um, and then obviously this end part there where the fence is, I'll, when I've done everything and I put that back to a fence um, rather than a gate, I'll tidy up that end. But it's all asking for tree ferns in there because it's in the shade. It'll be protected and obviously I can run my heating out for things. So yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it. But it's the exact effect I wanted. Well, not exact, but it's as close as I'm going to get without sort of, you know spending a load more money on it trying to put it exactly you know i should have made it all symmetrical rather than thought about making the distances right for the roofing those two i should have put them um, central to those two fence posts and again with these this sort of octagon bit in the grass i should have centralized them to that just just to give it a bit of a trick of the eye but yeah i'm pretty happy uh job done apart from little slaggy bits silicon is going to be doing a lot of work but i am a plumber um so there you go so i've got another hour i've got all my sawing stuff out um so you can see i've got those uh that old trellis that i mocked up before there that i'm going to use to edge those octagons there and then i've got a bit of the spare other trellis the main stuff and i'm going to get in behind that bamboo and do that bit hopefully and then that'll be a load of things ticked off the list and i can get on with some gardening in the next month Get it all ready for planting up in spring. Anyway, hope everyone's good and you're still watching. Have a good one. See you next time.